are in listen only mode. Hello, hello. Welcome to PD and your PJs. I'm so excited to be here with you tonight with Shelly to talk about classroom community. Oh, goodness. I'm showing my screen, but I think you might be seeing nothing here. Let me see if I can get you back to something that's a little more fun to look at. I'm here with Shelly Fryer, and she and I have just had a really good visit, and I'm excited for you to get to hear what she has to say. Um, this just might not be working for us tonight. Um, these are just my intro slides, and I'm just going to tell you a couple of bits of important information before I kick it over to Shelly. Um, you should hear me talking now, even though you didn't see much on your screen. Um, we are recording the session, and you're going to receive that in an email shortly after con we conclude. And of course, we will also share the slides, which is the best part. Shelly, I'm going to change it over to you because obviously I'm having some sort of problems on my end. Let me see if I can get it to you. Um, I'll just tell you who I am real quick, even if you can't see my slides. I'm Julie. I'm just out of the high school ELA classroom where I was a teacher for 18 years. I'm now on the community team at Seesaw. I work with Angela, so you might know her from some other trainings or webinars. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Ed Tech Julie J. I share mostly Seesaw related things. But the main thing I want to tell you about at this beginning part of the webinar is that if you are brand new to Seesaw, Shelly's webinar is really not going to be talking about that tonight. So you would need to visit ideas.seesaw.me to learn more about how you could get started or how you could set up a class. This webinar is not going to really talk about all of those things. So I just want to make sure you always know where you can find us if you need that kind of information. Um, also, if you're watching us later and you're not watching us in the live version of this webinar, you are going to see a link. You can see it now at the bottom left of Shelly's screen where you can open these slides in case you need them later if you're not registered and watching us live. Okay, Shelly, sorry about our technical glitch there, but I think you're good to go and we can see everything on your screen. I'm going to mute myself so you can take it away. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to this um, Seesaw presentation of Building Classroom Community. Like it says, I'm a third grade teacher at Cassidy School in Oklahoma City. Um, please connect with me on Twitter. I'm at S. Fryer. Um, it says over 20 years of experience, man, that is totally hard to believe because, um, I don't know, I still feel like I am thinking about what I want to be when I grow up. Um, I love to make things, I love to make and I create. Um, so in that whole digital innovator thing, and one of my new exciting things is I am gonna be doing some code.org workshops. So if you're a teacher and looking for that, um, that's what my new gig is now. So today we're gonna be talking about building classroom community with Seesaw. This are some more ways that you can connect with me on Twitter and Facebook. I'm in the um, third grade teacher. Facebook um, group. If you're not in that, I highly suggest you connect with your grade level group. Um, I do have a YouTube channel and my podcast, so um, all of it's classroom related um, things that I use for my classroom. And speaking of classroom, let me introduce you to um, room 12. Um, Cassidy Room 12, and this is who we are, and we are a family, and we are a community, and, and that's what I really believe in. Today, I was at a workshop, and, you know, um, they said, well, you know, why do you teach? And I was thinking about it, and, and I teach to help students love learning, and building relationships with my students is, is really a passion of mine, and so um, I love how Seesaw is um, allowing me to be able to do that, and so community does matter. Um, and it's a big part of who we are. I want to always start out with a cool story. So this is a total unplanned seesaw moment. Um, I teach at a school. My daughter is in eighth grade there. Um, my husband is a technology director. And um, we get to school early. And my eighth grader is an artist. And she um, started posting these questions for the day early in the year. I just, I, I was glad that she was entertained and she did her thing and, um, but it really started getting my students excited to get into the classroom. Uh, and then the students started keeping this list on the wall, that picture on the right is the student suggestions for the question of the day. And so Rachel will come in in the morning and she'll pick one of their questions and it's a big deal. And this has been huge with pulling my classroom together. I teach two sections of language arts. Um, in the day and both classrooms participate in these little questions of the day and 
Um, at the end of the day, students trade off, you know, posting it into our Seesaw class and sending it out to everybody. And, and it's a big favorite. It's become a huge favorite with um, the students and it's become a huge favorite with the parents. And, and we have a lot of conversation that happen around these questions for the day. So the organic, never planned it. It just kind of happened this year and, and it's been a big part of what we do. So our outline for today that we're going to be talking about is, you know, what is a classroom community and why is that classroom community important? And how do we begin to build a classroom community um, using this, this app Seesaw? So, um, and you know, our classroom is important to us and our school is important to us and, um, and how we do that together is is great when we were using Seesaw together. So, you know, what is a classroom community? Well, I've done a lot of thinking about this and really to me, it's, it's building those relational bridges. It's building those bridges between um, the students, have, helping them to connect with each other and get to know each other beyond just who they know at school. Um, it's also building bridges with teachers, you know, having students have that relationship with their teacher, that they know that teacher and they trust that teacher and that teacher makes them feel safe. And it's also building bridges um, with parents, which has been kind of a new phenomenon. I'm, I'm, this is my first year teaching third grade at Cassidy. Um, and, and I've been amazed at the, the parent interaction and just the relationships that I've been able to build and a lot partly due to Seesaw. So, you know, why is classroom community important to us? Well, I, um, the last four years I taught at a school in Oklahoma City. It was a school for homeless children. And in that classroom, it was all about family. And when I moved to Cassidy, I was just, I wondered about what was going to happen there and why was that and how was I going to build that community? And it's really classroom community for us is, is all of these things, you know, it's, it's about connecting with each other. It's about getting to know each other's interests. It's about knowing that we're safe in an environment. It's about remembering our year and being able to, to celebrate um, activities that we're doing. It's, um, it's building confidence and trust with each other. Um, and it's also building confidence and trust with our parents. And so it's important. These are things that, um, you know, make school real. And, and I think it's something that we all need to, you know, make sure that we're being very intentional about as we go throughout our days. Um, when I first started using Seesaw, I was producing a lot of digital media. We were doing, um, you know, iMovie trailers and green screen videos. And, and I really um, didn't have any place to put that where students can see it. So when I first started using Seesaw, it was just a place that became where I put the things that I was doing in the classroom. Um, it, at that point in the beginning, it really wasn't about the activities or the teaching or not using paper. It was so much more than that. And I love Seesaw for the enriched assessment possibilities. But for me, Seesaw and this learning journal really became our portfolio. It was the place where we shared our work and where we could see each other's work. And it became, it was just so much more. And it is so much more than just the assignments that me as a teacher are assigning. I want to give you a quick little story um, about empowering kids to have conversations. So here's a basic spelling activity. I'm a language arts teacher and, you know, like we're building these activity libraries now. This might be something in an activity library. And, and I had this student doing it. And of course, me as a teacher, when she turns it in, I'm looking to see, does she have all of the vowel teams in the right place? And is she reading those? words and she had to put her spelling list in there and then she had to go back in and read it and to me as teacher you know I'm looking for those things but then I start getting these comments and I'm like whoa who is this well her grandparents are stakeholders in her education and and her grandparents are in and they see this and they're one of my first parents to ever really get involved and and here is her this is Daddy Dave, and I know Daddy Dave now just by, you know, getting to know him on Seesaw, but, you know, responding back to her work and encouraging her and helping her. I don't think Daddy Dave lives in this state. I think he lives in another state, but he is involved in her education, and 
having empowering kids to have those kind of conversations with their parents and there's grandmother clapping and giving her feedback and and I can remember this day Ella responded back oh yeah I didn't do that let me go back and correct it she had made a mistake when she was saying one of the words but you know having those conversations is is building that bridge um, to in this case grandparents um, here's another story uh, I've got another student and in the beginning of the year we were working on character traits it went along with one of the novels that we were reading reading and so the students began creating word clouds it's a word cloud app on the iPad by ABC and of their character traits and then they would record their um, their voices and you know I can't think of anything more powerful than you know in the middle of your day being able to hear your students voice and talking about you know how she feels about herself and how she would describe herself and then later in the day getting this feedback from mom and dad you know I agree with those traits and also you're creative intelligent and thoughtful and you know dad saying yeah you are but you're also smart brave and witty and so just that being involved and in, I'm almost like on the outside looking into this to this interaction um, with parent and child and you know empowering students to, to use what they're using in the classroom but also making those connections um, with this activity so uh, being very intentional about the activity but then really noticing what's going on with the parents uh, this is another way um, we have a classroom podcast and we have our question for the day. I use it as a teacher, language teacher, and helping students to complete a thought, you know, um, you know, what are you thankful for? Well, repeating back the question and then giving a full answer and then, you know, giving detail, you know, I'm thankful for um, family dinners because. So it's a part of our oral fluency that we practice, but it also becomes just a window into our classroom. So I want to play you just a little bit of this. It's five minutes. I won't play that long. But this is one that um, I had both classes actually in class that day. And, and we're just, you know, having a conversation um, in one of our classroom meetings about what are you really thankful for? And I use an app um, called Opinion, Opinion app. It's on my phone and it's a really easy way to, to just collect, oops, whoops, a quick audio. There we go. And this is Cassidy Room 12 podcast. Today is November 20th, 2017, and this is Cassidy News 12 coming to you live from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The question of the day is, what are you most thankful for? Hi, my name is Graham, and I am most thankful for my family because I would not know how to do anything without them. Hi, my name is Adeline. I am most thankful for my house because it covers my head when it rains. Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and I am thankful for my pets because I can tell them whatever I want and they will never tell anyone. Hi, my name is Kyra. I am thankful for all my friends and cousins because I wouldn't have anyone to play with if I didn't have them. Hi, my name is Grace, and I am thankful for my grandparents because they let me think whatever, and they say I'm smart. All right, we're going to kind of stop right there. Again, helping my students find voice and then building our community together, um, listening to, you know, things that are outside of our classroom. Um, is a really, I think, valuable tool. Um, and especially being able to voice um, who is important to us and what is important to us. And that goes a lot to build our classroom culture. Um, it, it helps us respect and care for each other um, and view each other not just as classmates, but maybe actually as friends. So um, just using our classroom um, podcast radio show is 
one of the ways that, um, and, and again, having an app like Seesaw that can hold this and so that we can share that inside of our classroom, but also outside of our classroom. Talking about making parent connections, um, I did teach at a school for homeless children um, where I had two connected parents and I thought, well, that's pretty awesome to have at least two connected parents to my Seesaw group. Um, and this was one of my connected parents and she was awesome. And we had a field trip and we were learning how to fish. And I had loaded up our fishing pictures um, on the bus on the way home. And before I even got back to school, I had a reply back from this mother. And she was like, oh, thank you. This is his dream to go fishing. I am so happy for my baby. And, you know, that that went a long way with me. Um, it was important. You know, she was making that school connection. Um, and in situations like that where they don't have as they don't feel like they have as much representation. Um, but this really made her feel like a part of her students learning and and which I think is is valuable when we um, one of the first ways that I began using Seesaw in some ways was just posting pictures. And that's a great entry level thing. Um, and but but really being able to make those connections um, is important. Um, another great way of making parent connections um, is again, and, and I think the value of student voice is so important. Um, student uh, teacher or let's say parents really love getting these pictures, but making that connection um, with hearing their student voice is huge. Um, this is a student, and the art teacher actually posted this and had the student talk about um, how they were using this in the classroom. Again, I want you to hear the student voice. I want you to hear oops, a little bit about how she's describing her picture that they had done in art class. Hi, my name is Kyla. I am describing how I made my beautiful sunflower. I created it by watercolor paint. I used something called a wet wash for the background. I used a wet and wet for the base and the vines and the black box. And the sunflower. I blended some pink and blue in the background. I put yellow and orange for the sunflower leaves. We used Vincent Van Gogh's sunflower paintings to get inspiration first. Miss Time. All right. And then she goes in to describe, you know, as the art teacher, I'm sure she's listening to see kind of how much of that technique and, you know, how they connected to that Vincent Van Gogh. Me, as language arts teacher, I'm listening. Oh, she's doing a great job of sequential, you know, telling about first and then and next and last. Um, and so we as teachers, we're looking at it like that. But then when dad hears this and sees this, and I have to tell you a little story about this. Um, um, both her, her parents are physicians and dad travels quite a bit. And, 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 but he stays real connected with her. And there have been times when he's out of town that, you know, she and her dad will actually have some interaction actions back and forth. So this has been seen by mom and dad. And then this is what you don't see when I just share it straight from Seesaw. You know, here is this interaction between her dad and, and the student. And, you know, dad is saying, oh, here's a little juicy tidbit about Vincent Van Gogh. So he was taking medications back in the time to deal with a heart condition. But he really didn't have a heart condition. And they were giving him some medication. And this medication happened to cause him to be able to see everything with a yellowish hue in her vision. So, you know, when you look at Vincent Van Gogh's stuff, um, you know, it all has kind of that yellow muted on top of it. And then he goes back in to saying, hey, he didn't have a heart condition, but actually had epilepsy, but they didn't know that. And so that day we happened to be talking about comments, you know, how students can leave each other comments. But when we leave a comment, we need to be specific. Well, that day, you know, this dad's comment was up there and we talked, wow, is this specific? Is he, you know, giving us new information? And it became a really impressive way to use dad's information to extend our own learning. Um, but also just, you know, the, the student was just so proud to, to, you know, to have that happening. It was a really great example of what a great comment should be. But it also was a learning opportunity for the rest of us in the classroom. So I just think those kind of um, connections and building those bridges with parents um, is, is wonderful. And, and it gave them, I'm hoping, something to do um, and talk about um, later on during the day. 
Um, another awesome way to use Seesaw to build classroom community is, is about celebrating. It's about celebrating um, what's going on at school. And this happened to be the first day of school where these two young friends um, were excited to see each other after a long summer break. Uh, but, you know, kind of keeping a scrapbook um, of our year um, so that they can go back later and say, wow, you know, look how much I've grown or, oh, there's that friend or remembering back through the day. Um, just documenting those classroom experiences um, is really cool and and important. Um, celebrating different days, you know, um, in September we did International Dot Day, and, and this happened to be when I was introducing Seesaw in the beginning, and we were introducing the draw feature, and so they did their dots in the draw feature on um, Seesaw, and then they had to say, hey, how are you going to build your mark on the world? Um, and I think this one is real quick. I'll let you hear um, this student talk about my mark on the world to help other people solve their problems. And you know that's a really neat thing is to be able to um, to collect his voice and, and 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 also celebrate that activity. So special days, building that into um, just how we celebrate our community. Um, this is another special day that we did at Global School Play Day, um, which I have celebrated um, and participated in. Definitely um, hashtag and Google that because it's a really awesome thing international, you know, students just taking that one whole day just to play and just to connect and and talk about building community into the classroom, but also about um, talking about the importance of unstructured play and how we need to build an unstructured time within our school day. So that was a neat experience. Also, um, you know, just building our community within our school building. Um, we've I've done an after school coding club um, using PBS Scratch Junior um, after school and I'm also doing it. I've done a after school coding club um, and you know once we learn a skill and then we want to share a skill. So in this case we had our first firsty friends come down and and we were teaching them um, how to code using PBS Scratch Junior. But again documenting classroom experiences sharing with our friends, um, building that community, not only within our classroom, but outside the walls of our classroom. And then, and then it gives students a purpose um, for being there and, and building. This is um, when I taught at Positive Tomorrows. Um, I think we do have to be sensitive about having permission to share students' photos. You'll notice in all of these that I'm not using student names with student pictures. Um, in this case, at Positive Tomorrows, um, we had what we called red shirts. And red shirts, we did not have permission to share their faces, but we wanted them to feel like they were a part of the community. So I used to get really um, creative about how I could include them. And you'll notice my red shirt in this picture is wearing a Darth Vader mask. And so, you know, he didn't want to always have to be left out of our pictures, you know, and and yet I could include him so that he could uh, be a part of that community. And that is about keeping our kids safe and, and talking about good digital citizenship and, and being aware of, of how we portray in an authentic way um, what's going on in our classrooms. And, and I think people need to know what's going on in our classrooms, but we do need to be very careful about keeping our kids both emotionally safe and physically safe. Um, another way that I love um, reaching outside the walls of our classroom, working on our world community, um, I have a, a, a newspaper app. It's Newsomatic. If you haven't heard of it, look that up. But it, they write um, a newspaper. It's a digital newspaper for kids, and they write it 365 days a year, and they work really hard. All of their articles are vetted just for kids and written just for kids. And this was around February. Um, of course, Valentine's Day. We had just finished uh, a unit um, in third grade over chocolate. Um, it was a big um, project-based unit, and we had talked about, you know, how some of the cocoa farmers use child slave labor, and, and we were really in tune with, you know, fair trade chocolate. And then this article came up in Newsomatic talking about Red Hand Day, and, and it just 
you made that connection not only with our chocolate unit, but it made that connection to what was going on in the world and, and being able to document that. And then when I posted this and the students uh, for everybody, I was posting it really for parents to give parents an opportunity to talk about um, some of the things that are going on in the world. So I actually recorded this so that parents could talk about it and have some today in classroom meeting we read the article red hand day in newsomatic please discuss this important article with your kids you only have the first page but the students were able to read the entire article so I do think it's important to, to not only build community within the walls of our classroom, but also encouraging them to have voice and know what's going on in the world in a, in a very kid-centered way. And so I use my um, classroom community, um, I have a folder, um, as an opportunity to start those conversations and get kind of in a deeper learning process when we do that. Um, we also, this is what we did for our Red Hand Day, um, and we made the heart and, and you know, just giving kids um, service, service that our school is very important and, and service to our community is very important. And this is a way that we could, uh, you know, talk about how others are encouraged to, to make a difference in the world and how we can leave our mark on the world. So I end this with a call to action, an activity that you can do and I, no I didn't save it in an activity library you'll have to do that one on your own but um, it goes back to that one of the first activities or examples that I shared about um, the student who had the um, character traits well this is one that I always love to share do at the end of the year um, when students know each other when we spend a year building relationships with each other so I I have each student in the classroom comment a positive character trait um, on all of their fellow students. And so this character trait that you see over here, this word cloud, and again, I use word cloud by ABC, it's an iPad app. Um, and so the students collect those words, those positive words that their friends have described them by, and they put that into a word cloud. Um, and that way, it's really meaningful because the, that's the way that their classmates view them. And, and then they read that back out. I actually printed these out with the QR code on it so that they could have those to take home, laminated it even. It was kind of like their, you know, how their classmates viewed them. It was a kind of a th something that they could take with them um, to document their year in the classroom. And I love this because this is Amika. And Amika was playful and she was hardworking and she was funny and she was quiet. She was helpful. And, you know, that's the way that her classmates saw her. And that was powerful for her to be able to see that in herself and acknowledge that in herself. So that's kind of my call to action. If you create uh, an activity page, please share that with me because um, I would love to be able to do that. I just haven't taken the time to get all of that done. Looks like I have a couple minutes if we have any. Oh, well, let me tell you this last story. Um, talk about building classroom community. This was huge. This was huge for me this year. Um, I lost my father to a heart attack um, earlier in the year. And um, it was a real, it was a surprise. It was shock. Um, I left, you know, in the middle of the day at noon and to fly to Dallas to be there with him. And while I was gone, <clears throat> the students at, at school built it outside at recess for me it's a cross and they built it in memory um, of my dad and they built it for me because um, their hearts were hurting and, and we walked through that together and um, it just it meant a lot that um, that the students could take that experience and, and become a part of it that we were a classroom family and that they were able to share that with me and um, I think that's really what building community is all in a all about is is becoming real to each other and and building a community together and and seesaw is just awesome to be able to have a platform like this um, to be able to share that together so anyway you can connect with me here um, on any of these work I mean I'm pretty active on the third grade um, Facebook page but if anybody has any questions we only have a 30 seconds so but I'd be glad to answer any
Um, Shelly, this was so wonderful. You are making a lot of people smile. The question box is mostly filled with thanks and compliments, but I am going to ask you a few questions that some people are posting. Um, people have really loved this. You're getting lots of love from Peggy, Stacy, Elena, Cynthia, Sarah. Um, qu quick question too about your photos. Do you make that an activity for students to post their own photos or does everybody just post photos as they take them? Um, you don't make any sort of like template for folders, I don't think, right? No, I do not. You know, <laughs> I am an old school Seesaw user and I haven't really jumped on that activity bandwagon. I love it. Uh, it just, I, it hasn't been a part of my repertoire. So I, I, I maybe spend some time this summer playing around with it. But most of the time, um, my students just post to their activity journal themselves. Um, and, you know, we have a small enough classroom and it's a part of just our digital um, repertoire on how we add that. So I probably need to get a little more organized with the activities, but I haven't really done that yet. No, but I actually think for what you're talking about, like taking photos of special class events, I don't know that the activity structure would even serve that. I think yeah. you could organize yeah. with folders. Like I would sometimes as a classroom teacher yeah. have a folder called beginning of the year pictures or something. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's exactly what I do. And a lot of times I'm taking pictures on my phone and adding them in. And, and then also, you know, students are taking pictures in the classroom. So it's kind of a little both. Sometimes I take pictures and airdrop pictures to them so that they can create their collages. Right. So right. it happens organically in a variety of different ways. Yes. Well said. Um, Peggy is wanting confirmation. Do you pay for Newsomatic? I can't remember what their subscription plan yeah, is. Yes, it's a paid app. Um, and I, um, I only have it on my classroom iPads. We are, I used to be in a one-to-one -one situation, and now I'm in a shared iPad situation. So I pay for it just for my specific apps. I get some money from the librarian. She bought some, and I've bought some. So my students use it. Um, some of them have bought it at home as a single usage. But yes, it is a paid app. Unless you have Myon. They are connected with Myon. And if you have the news section of Myon, which I don't have, uh, but Newsomatic works closely with Myon as well. But it is a standalone app, and I would highly recommend it. But it is a little pricey if you're looking at buying a site license. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. And remind us again what tool you're using um, for the podcast. We listened to part of your thankful yeah. podcast. What tool was that? On this, it's called Opinion. And on this page, you can still see my screen, right? Do you yes, see I the can. little... Your screen. The, the red guy talking on the far end next to the house. I don't know. Uh -huh, right. right. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. That's the opinion app. So it's opinion. And they used to host it. And now um, I'm hosting it on Podium, which is another hosting app. And so um, it takes a few more clicks than I would like. Um, but recording the app on using the opinion app is so easy just to do right on my phone, which is why I stick with it. So my hosting is a little different. And I, I'm able to link it um, and share those links with the students. It's also on my web page, which I think has now been hacked. So you may not want to go there. Um, Mrs. Uh, Fryer at Cassidy.org. There is a link to uh, my um, podcast there. But that's the app that I use for my radio show. Okay, that's super helpful. And just to kind of throw out there, um, if you're thinking in general about podcasting, Shelly's giving you some great ideas for other tools, but you could essentially create a podcast right in Seesaw. I mean, oh, you could have, I mean, you could take one photo or one image you created, like a word cloud or some other pic collage, some other digital art, and just have a student narrate or audio record along with that. So if you're um, inspired by the idea of the podcast, but intimidated by thinking about going to another outside app, I think you really could do it maybe just in Seesaw or an app smash, smash with Shadow Puppet too, yeah. mm -hmm. which we I have about. a question. How, how long, I've forgotten and I probably should know this, but how long is the recording now within the app? How long can you record something? Uh, 10 with, minutes. It's 10, 10 minutes. That's yeah. great. Oh man, that's huge because I try to make my, my podcast, you know, anywhere from three to five. I try not to make them much longer than five because people won't listen to them. Well, and when I had students, I would do um, like my audio newsletter and, you know, I taught big kids, so I wasn't typically sending home any paper newsletter ever. But once we were all connected to Seesaw and it was so convenient to do it, I started recording like a weekly audio newsletter 
And like, that's the same way you could do a podcast, probably just taking a photo and then recording. Okay, well, Shelly, we probably are going to wrap up tonight, but you guys can still see her screen and you have all those ways you can contact her. All those little squares at the bottom are icons and you can click those we, when you get yeah, like, when you get her slides. And then her Twitter handle is there at the bottom. Um, you are going to get a survey that pops up on your screen shortly after we conclude. And I would love it if you could give me some feedback about the webinar. It's how we make our sessions better and how we get ideas for future topics. And we also draw one winner each week from those responses. Somebody randomly will win a Seesaw t-shirt. So take a minute, give us some feedback and maybe you'll win the shirt. Shelly, it was so fun listening to you tonight. I always learned so much. Um, and this one was really inspirational. I loved all of your anecdotes and stories. You have built a really amazing community with your students. Yeah, we're, you. we're so lucky you could share with us tonight. Thanks so much. I hope to be with you all again really soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.